the very first thing we do before starting any reading passage is to read the blurb, this thing right here, and the first paragraph. So in this case, it's lines 1 through 16. A lot of students skip over the blurb because they don't think it has anything to do with it or they feel like they can ignore it. Don't do this because a lot of times, sometimes, yeah, it, it may not really help, but a lot of times it does. So let's see if this helps us. This passage is adapted from Francis J. Flynn and Gabriel. Okay, so that doesn't help. And then the title, Money Can't Buy Love, Asymmetric Beliefs About Gift Price and Feelings of Appreciation. So at least we have an idea in terms of what this passage about is about. Asymmetric beliefs about gift price and feelings of appreciation. So if you haven't read any of this passage, at least you know that it's going to talk about, probably going to talk about correlation of uh, gift prices, lower gift prices, higher gift prices, and what does that correlate between, you know, what correlation is there between that and feelings of appreciation. Then we read the first paragraph. After we read the first paragraph, we want to just kind of sum it up in, you know, five words or less. So let's go ahead and read it. Every day, millions of shoppers hit the stores in full force, both online and on foot, searching frantically for the perfect gift. Last year, Americans spent over $30 billion at retail stores in the month of December alone. Aside from purchasing holiday gifts, most people regularly buy presents for other occasions throughout the year, including weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, and baby showers. This frequent experience of gift giving can engender ambivalent feelings in gift givers. Many relish the opportunity to buy presents because gift giving offers a powerful means to build stronger bonds with one's closest fears, peers. At the same time, many dread the thought of buying gifts. They worry that their purchases will disappoint rather than delight the intended recipients. So I'm just going to sum this up uh, just in a couple words. And really the, the first sentence kind of really sums it up very well. Every day, millions of shoppers hit the stores in full force, both online and on foot searching for the perfect gift. So. Basically, I could just say people shop a lot for gifts. And yours can be a variation on that. Did I just misspell gifts? I think I just said girfts, gifts. I can spell, I promise. There, that's better. So, everyday millions of shoppers. So. Again, yours can be a little bit different, but basically it's just talking about how people shop a lot for gifts um, and they kind of give all these supporting examples like last year, 30 billion. These are kind of all details, but in the end, people shop a lot for gifts. It's something they do fairly regularly. So let's look at number 11 so 11 and 12 are both based off the first paragraph so we can do 11 and 12 just by reading this the authors most likely use and these are both specific questions we want to do the specific questions first the authors most likely use the examples in line one through nine of the passage to highlight the and one through nine we kind of summed up you know, the whole paragraph, one through nine is pretty much most of the paragraph, that people shop a lot for gifts, right? We want to answer the question in our own words before jumping to the answer choices. So don't jump immediately to the answer choices because they have a way of manipulating us and we don't want to make any interpretations. So just answer it yourself. The author, the authors most likely use the examples in lines one through nine of the passage to highlight the fact that people shop a lot for gifts. They shop fairly often for gifts. So let's go through the answer choices and instead of picking the right one, let's eliminate the wrong ones. 
So A, regularity with which people shop for gifts. Well, that's kind of what I said. So let's keep this one. Recent increase in the amount of money spent on gifts. No. Nowhere here did it say, you know, Americans spent, you know, $5 billion on gifts. And now recently it has jumped up to $30 billion. It just, it didn't talk about any recent increase. Anxiety gift giving causes consumers. Nope. We said that, again, that's not what our answer said. We said that they use the examples to highlight that people shop a lot for gifts. Number of special occasions involving gift giving. Again, that's not what we said. We said to highlight that people shop a lot for gifts. Now, a lot of people might pick or a lot of students might pick D because of this part. Aside from purchasing holiday gifts, most people regularly buy presents for uh, other occasions throughout the year, including weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, and baby showers. But is that the main point? Is this why the author wrote this, the authors wrote this paragraph? They wrote this paragraph to show the general idea that people shop a lot for gifts. This is kind of just a, a sub point. This is really the main thing. Every day, millions of shoppers hit the stores in full force, searching frantically for the perfect gift. So in terms of which one is more wrong, A or D, D is more wrong. So again, use this uh, strategy of eliminating. Instead of picking the right answer, eliminate the wrong answers. So that's A. Now let's look at question number 12. In line 10, the word ambivalent most nearly means, so ambivalent is right here. So let's just pretend the word ambivalent didn't exist. Let's just say blank. We have to kind of read in context to know what the word ambivalent means. So this frequent experience of gift giving can engender blank feelings in gift givers. So if we just read that, we don't know what ambivalent means. This frequent experience of gift giving can engender blank feelings in gift givers. We have to read on to figure out what this word means. Many relish the opportunity to buy presents because gift giving offers a powerful means to build stronger bonds with one's closest peers. At the same time, many dread the thought of buying gifts. They worry that their purchases will disappoint rather than delight the intended recipients. So this is where the answer is. Basically after. So they say many relish it because it offers a powerful means to build stronger bonds with one's closest peers but at the same time many dread it because they think that their gifts will disappoint the intended recipients so they kind of have mixed feelings you know they relish it on one hand but that on the other hand they dread it so they have mixed feelings about it. Notice how we're answering the question first before jumping, jumping to the answer choices. Now, like number 11, instead of picking the right answer, we're going to eliminate the ones that are least like what we said. So they have mixed feelings about it. They relish it on one hand, but they dread it on another hand. Unrealistic? No. Supportive? Nope. Now we have apprehensive. Apprehensive means kind of anxious, uncertain, and then we also have conflicted. 
They have conflicted feelings. I think conflicted better matches with mixed feelings rather than appreh apprehensive. So we can get rid of apprehensive and go with B, conflicted. So we're going to continue with this passage in the next video. So I'll see you there.